So my name is Matthias Fross. I'm uh, uh, head of what we call AI strategy and acceleration in the bank. So strategy is basically how we organize around this new technology, and, and acceleration is about you know getting shit down basically uh, and, and learn, get the learnings. Uh, I'm not even going to try to make the same dramatic entrance as H&M uh, did. Uh, I don't think I could get away with that as a banker. Uh, so I will just say that I. I I hope that you find my story uh, somewhat interesting. It's not going to be very technical, perhaps the least technical presentation on this stage. Um, uh, but, I, but as I've, I've heard many say here, it's, it's not so much about technology, it's, so much, uh, it, it's all about sort of the other stuff around it that makes a difference. So, um, right now, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big hype, I think, still. Uh, everybody's talking about AI. Only a couple years ago, nobody really talked about AI. I've been part of the... In, in 16, 15, we started to play out with robotics, like robotics automation, right? So, 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 so in 16, everybody started to about, talk about robotics. And we have, and I was part of setting that up, and the first robot went live in 17, and now we have about 300 robots in Odea. Uh, and then in, in, in 17, it was like chatbots, so everybody talked about chatbots, and, and, and I was part of building that up, and, and, and our, our chatbot now has about 120,000 conversations per month with customers and employees. And I think, you know, in, in, in seven, late 17, or, or, but, but really just last year, everybody started talking talk about AI. So that's where we are now. Everybody's talking about AI, but are we really doing that much? I mean, a lot of companies are doing much, uh, like Google and, and, and the, the companies born in the last 10 years or so, or 20 years. Um, but in terms of incumbent banks and stuff, like my type of companies, we don't really do much yet. But there's a great potential. So I, <laughs> I, don't, I think this has been said a hundred times already in this conference, but I, I've used this, this slide for a year now, and I think it's still kind of, now it's really taking off, everybody's using it, but that's the way I see it. And I work on the group level in the bank, so I see retail, I see wholesale, uh, small companies, I see markets, uh, research, I see corporate finance, I see wealth management, life and pension, uh, and also the internal functions in finance and HR, and everybody will benefit from, from this new technology, right? So it's, it's clearly for, 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 for the bank, it is gonna be like electricity, and it's gonna change everything. And that is, we have launched this. This is about as bold as an old bank can be when they kind of launch a new cool image. You know, Nodia AI. I had some more bold <laughs> suggestions on how to brand ourselves. But this is, this is given, you know, a bank like Nodia's standards, this is pretty bold. And we have launched this as a response to that we are really embracing this. And we are really want to, you know, attract people who want to be part of changing banking, because it's going to change. Uh, so, so and we also want to attract the biggest problems to solve in the bank. So that is what this, um, this, this brand is going to be about. Um, and so what is AI right now? I think this is what it is. And it, it, this is the, the machine learning and deep learning stage, right? So, so right now, I don't, haven't seen many deep learning use cases in banking. Uh, maybe, maybe I missed a few of them. I mean, I see a lot of deep learning applications uh, and also platforms like Palterian and those guys that, 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 that are, are emerging and I'm sure they will be very impactful. But right now, deep learning sits mainly in the, air, in, in, in the use cases around reading data, reading or you know, text, vision and, and, uh, and sound. And we have built a chatbot, which is you know, deep learning. We also use external uh, cloud-based chatbots. So that, that is the deep learning part of what we apply in the banking right now. But all the other stuff is, 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 is if you're uh, machine learning. So, so pattern recognition, uh, you know, finding regularities in, in data, uh, predicting stuff, uh, customize stuff, uh, make decisions and interact with customers and others. Those are, the, those are where we sort of, if, we, if you talk about what is AI, that is, those are the, the areas where we apply AI at the moment. And why is this happening now? I think for bank, banking, as, as perhaps other industries, are very, very sort of subject to change. Uh, 
both in terms of you know the regulations banks are there's a, there's a number of regulations coming in that is really putting a lot of pressures on banks uh, and have us change things have us use our data in in, in 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 a special way and that is a big part of why why this is now sort of why, why machine learning ai can help us move forward and also everything is changing in the in the in the in the business models in the customer behaviors in the competition that we see you know what what happens when amazon opens a bank in the nordics and you know offers banking for free because they only want your data you know what kind of those kind of scenarios are of real so 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 there's a there's a big need for us to, to step the game step up the game but also of course the technology it actually works and that's what you, this conference is about actually it's it's happening so a couple of reflections um, one is that AI is not about let's buy a CRM system or a ERP system or, or something and it will help us be better. AI is about believing that it will be something will come out of it, but, but it's it's not it's not gonna be obvious, right? And you know what 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 so how will it will affect us? How can we use it to get better? That, that takes a lot of kind of exploration work. How can we use our data in a better way? So I took the, have you seen, how many have seen Matrix? Yeah, good. It's one of the best movies ever. So, so if you took the, the red pill, you, you kind of uh, uh, decided to, you want to go in down into the rabbit hole and see how, just how far it will take you. And that's what I've done, and that's what I guess a lot of you people here are doing every day as well, uh, because it will ch it will change things. But it's not it's not obvious. You're not going to see the matrix yet. I mean, in banking, what what does banking look like in five years? Nobody knows. I mean, ten years we have no clue. In five years, some people th claim they do. I, I'm not sure. But if you, if you, if you go down here, I think that it will help you see. The other reflection is is this. So I used to be one of the shiny shoe guys. I was CFO of a life company. That is about as shiny as, as it gets. Which means that it's about regulation, it's about control, risk mitigation, uh, you know, trust and everything. And that is of course still important for a bank. But unless we put our sneakers on and think different, get away from the incremental uh, way of changing to reimagining how we can do stuff with data and with machine learning. So that's, I have my blue sneakers on today. I have a red pair and a black pair as well. Um, the red ones are for when I get really crazy. The blue ones are, you know, medium. Uh, and, but, but, but nevertheless, it, it, we need to be more sneakers in, in banking, for sure. And that is one of my missions in the bank. Because it is how you think about things that will make the difference. Um, there was a keynote uh, yesterday, he was talking about the new core, the legacy, where the legacy and the AI and machine learning where kind of meet. That's exactly what this is. You need to find the new core, how you, so how you will transform, how to quickly transform yourselves. And, and the legacy, you need to sort of build independence from the legacy. Reflection three is, is a bit similar to, the, to Errol from H&M, he was talking about uh, use cases kind of evolving, and this is the way I, my experience over the last couple of years now with, 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 within our company is that you have these small use cases, you start, they start rolling down the hill, and you start learning things, and you change things, and you stop things, and some of them emerge into bigger snowballs because yeah, we, we, see, the, we see the value now, uh, we, we start to trust it, uh, and then eventually you know, you will be, it, it will change the way we do credit scoring, or pricing, or KYC, or whatever. But, but it's really a lot about, it's all about getting the learning. So I work with credit, credit guys in the bank, they're pretty conservative and that's just a lot about trust and, 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 and they need, we need six months, 12 months to actually be, build trust in use, to leave the, the rule-based policy, you know, driven way of thinking to the data business, um, way of, of, of driving things. And that's a huge step, huge step for a bank, for any company, but especially for a bank. So the way I, my, my team kind of differentiates from, from, from the rest of the bank perhaps is that we, 
we are focusing on the bigger problems. So not the sort of the incremental or the, 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 the obvious analytics cases that you do, but more like the big, what are the big problems that we now can solve? When I was in, in, in California a while back, then that's, that's what, this is the first question you get like when you're in Silicon Valley, like what's, what's, your, what's your 10x stuff? What 10x stuff are you working on? That's the first question you ever get. I didn't even know what that was a year and a half ago. But it's like, so what is the exponential projects that you're working on? Because that is, that is what we need to focus on now. And we can actually do that. So my, my, my view is that we should move 99% of the projects we do in a large corporation like a bank is within the horizon one. Improving the current, improving the current processes, the products, the customer experience, you know, making it 10% better, 20%, even maybe 40% better sometimes. And I'm just trying to get a little bit of that investment and move it into Horizon 2, at least, to say, okay, how do we, if we could dream up, how would we like this claims process to look like? Yeah, it should be instant. It should be customized. Okay, what do we need to do that? Well, we need this, 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 this. And we can actually build that now. With the available technology and the vendors that are here today, for example, you can build a lot of stuff. You can pretty much build a bank from scratch in less than six months if you, you, know, if you wanted to, right? That is, the, that is the thinking. That is, I think, what... So that's my mission, to, to combine higher ambitions with, with you know, service design thinking and new technologies, such as AI, APIs, cloud, blockchain, what have you. So we can actually move ourselves uh, because we don't have time to do incremental improvements. So my hypothesis is that, is that, and this might, I think this is true for a lot of large corporations, that a lot of the stuff we do in Horizon 1, we shouldn't do. We should do things in a different way. And there's, no, there's nothing more inefficient to improve something that you shouldn't do in the first place. But of course, that's easy to say, uh, and, and so, I need to, so I need to prove that to my management. So that's what I'm working on. Not myself, but all the, t all the team, of course. So then a uh, little bit on all what we do. Uh, we, we, we apply uh, AI in, in three different buckets, you could say. We're trying to make the digital experience better, uh, more customized. Um, we are trying to uh, superpower our employees, giving them better tools, um, enabling them to, 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 to focus on, on, on the more creative and important stuff. And we are making things instant. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of what I mean by, with all these three. I mean, for the first one, I think this is Nova. Uh, she, she, was, she was born or... The avatar or, or the chapel was born in, in June, June 17, when we went live with our first version. And now there is about 100, 120,000 interactions per month uh, with this. So it's kind of, it's kind of replacing the, 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 um, the open pages and also helping you do stuff in a loading environment. And that is, of course, going to change the way we interact with our bank going forward. Uh, and, and I think we are, only, we are only in the beginning of the beginning of something here. The way we do banking, I mean, what a bank is for in, in, in a couple of years, you know, it'll change, but the way we do banking will also change. And I think the interaction with our Google Homes or, or Alexas or, 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 or chatbots and everything, that, that's that what we'll start seeing now for real. We don't see that much yet because everybody is, is kind of hiding them still, because we're not really mm, trust them yet, they're not really sure, but the potential is huge here, I think. Uh, the other one is around giving our employees superpowers, right? So financial crime is an area where banks, a lot of the banks have started their the machine learning uh, journey because they usually have good data and it's an important area, very high focus. So here are two examples. We have a trade surveillance. Uh, it's about uh, you know discovering patterns uh, that look strange, right? And, and there's so many transactions that it's impossible for human eye unless you have 10,000 of people to, to kind of to see this. Problem is we have few real cases uh, and and they're very sort of limited uh, data. So here we use uh, unsupervised clustering models to 
to, to, to detect these irregularities. So that's more like the un, uh, unsupervised uh, example, but it's really improving the, the, uh, the detection rate and also helping these, uh, these people that work with this, uh, augmenting them more than 10x. The other case is in AML, which is a popular topic uh, right now. Um, and it's about, there we have a lot of data actually. So there we can, we can we, the, the humans and, and the AI is working side by side to, to, uh, to find efficiencies. And so that's, this snowball has been rolling for a while now. It's kind of actually getting a bit bigger. So, so you know, going forward, you know, you have these huge rule-based role -based systems that, and then you have an AI kind of behind, um, beside this now. But going forward, I foresee that you know you will go probably AI first, and then get rid of these uh, very sort of uh, time-consuming, complex rule models, and have a better system that is faster and it's um, uh, of course cheaper. Uh, so, but it's about building trust in those models and being able to understand them and being able to explain them. Uh, the last one is this uh, auto instant banking thing. So this is a claims handling process where we said, okay, let's just do instant claims. If you if you if you work for Statoil in Norway and you get sick, uh, you know you want you want instant payout of your insurance money because you have an injury in the back or whatever. And this usually takes 60 days, but doing it in a different way by applying a few different components such as a rule engine, uh, um, and and the rules can be fined by using a machine learning, right? Uh, and 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 if you if you if you, if, you, if you have a yes, then you can just hand it over to a robot, and then you can, a robot can hand it over to a pattern recognition engine who can just make sure there's no financial fraud, and just pay out the money. And this this green stream now takes it used to take 60 days, now it takes um, one day because we run this up one once a day, right? Huge impact on customer experience. For the yellow cases, we get a lot of documents from doctors, and we just scan them, and 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 then we have a, an OCR that is smart that just puts everything in straight take unstructured text, make it structured, hand it over to a text analytics engine who looks for keywords, medical medical history, medicine, and then makes a decision, uh, and then and then automates it. And and the really tough cases goes to human. I think it's a great. It's not it's not a technical complex thing, but the way you solve the problem, so is is the thing here. Um, so that's a learning that you can actually take different components now and solve an end-to-end -end and process like this. Right. So my pro proposition and 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 Errol from H and M was in this, like providing microservices for the bank that they can use and infuse in their in 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 their in their in their value chains, right? Because AI is only the enabler, or or, or machine learning algorithms, models, applications is only components to solve to solve a problem. So that's my, my value proposition is to have these so we can infuse them in the, in the bank's um, value chains in these different use cases. And to do this, you need to have an organization that is a little bit outside of the business as usual. Uh, otherwise, you get stuck in internal processes. So we have a way of thinking about this as more like a, a, a startup uh, within, within the bank who's solving these particular problems. And to end up, I would say the main challenges are around uh, thinking about problems. The, the claims case, you know, the, the first uh, first plan was to throw robots at it, and, and they got 10 or 20 percent improvement, which is not bad. Uh, bad, it's it's pretty good. But then they they they, they thought, okay, well, what what do we need to do instant claims? And that's what they came up with. So I think that the mindset and how to solve the big problems is 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 actually uh, what it is. Um, about and and for um, for uh, for a big bank and for a big corporation, it's very much about changing the internal processes, changing the uh, uh, the, the the way you think about what problem, what kind of people you need. So we need people who can solve problems, and we need to pay people to solve problems, not to stick to internal processes and procedures. But that is also a mind shift. Uh, so not every time we, we have a problem, we, we call consultants and have them come in because they get paid to, pay pro to, to solve problems. But we also have, need to have people who can solve problems. And that's it. Thank you.